everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacy, and I'm so glad you decided to join me. I am an infidelity recovery coach and I specialize in helping the unfaithful end their affair and heal from their affair partner. Okay, so let's get into today's video. Today's video is five reasons I should not leave my spouse for my affair partner. Now, I just want to put in a little disclaimer here that if you are in an abusive relationship, a marriage, that kind of thing, um, this video is not saying that you should stay with that person. Um, you should, you know, if you're experiencing physical abuse, you should always do what's best for you and your family to be protected. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm not saying, and I'm also not saying that people should stay in their marriage. You have to do what's best for you. This is just some reasons that I believe you should not leave your marriage for your affair partner. So let me explain just a little bit. When we're having an affair, we think that it would be best if we would leave our spouse. For those of us who have decided to, or who are contemplating leaving their spouse for their affair partner, we get to the place where we think, I will have a better life with my affair partner. Like we can make things work. We cannot make things, I cannot make my marriage work. And we will convince ourselves that we do not belong with our husband, okay? But sometimes thoughts and feelings lie to us. So I want to make this video because I want you to maybe see things from a different perspective, get a little bit clarity, um, some, you know, and some reasons why it's not best to leave your husband for your affair partner. Um, but of course, like I said, the decision is always yours and you have to do what's best for you and your family. Okay. So number one, your affair partner is just one piece of the pie, or in other words, he's just giving you one piece of the pie. So if you think about a pie and your husband is giving you most of the pie, like 90%, the affair partner is just giving you 10. Like that, that's just what it is. They're just coming in at a point in your life where they are fulfilling an unmet need. That's it. it you don't know what real life with them is like. You know, it's, it's just, hey, the marriage, you know, we haven't prioritized the marriage. The marriage, we started to grow apart. I have needs. I do not know how to communicate them effectively. Here comes the affair partner and he fulfills those needs. So is it, you know, you want to think, is it worth it for just 10%? And this 10% is clouding my vision because I'm ignoring all of the red flags for 10%. So what, so does that mean that I'm going to get 10% good with my affair partner and the rest, the 90% will be bad? That's very possible. Okay, number two, you cannot assume a full-time relationship will look like the escape you created. So a fair world, fair relationships, you're in a little bubble, you have a little vacation is what I like to call it. You're on vacation all the time no responsibilities, they become a relief. Because at home, if you have things going on that you do not know how to work through, like if you have overwhelming circumstances, it could be in-laws, it could be the marriage, it could be just the stress, financial, whatever it could be, can put a lot of pressure on someone and stress them out and they don't know how to handle that. So the affair partner becomes an escape, just like alcohol becomes a numbing effect. You numb the pain, you take a break from the pain and the frustration and the, the problems and kids and all of that. You're taking a break from that and you are with your affair partner. He's the break, the relationship's the break. But you cannot base a full-time relationship on a break, you know, like on this little vacation world that you guys created because it's a relationship. Just like the marriage started out great and became a problem, 
the affair can start out great and become a problem as well if you got with this person because relationships are relationships. It doesn't matter if you're married or you're having an affair. You create intimacy with someone. You build an emotional connection with that person. And it, if you were dating that your affair partner, like neither one of you were married and you could be together, that relationship would go through four stages. And you would handle the power struggle stage with your affair partner the same way you handle the power struggle stage with your current spouse. So, you know, you got to think about that. You have to, we have to open our eyes to see those things because that's the truth. And, you know, we have to see that God did not create the relationship between you and your affair partner. He gave you the ability to fall in love. He doesn't take that away when you get married. God tells us in his word that he gives us everything that we need to sustain life. And a part of sustaining life is our ability to fall in love and have a partner. Because God said it's not good for man to be alone. So he has to create a chemical reaction in our body to be able to fall in love and have kids and have, you know, have this great relationship. He doesn't take that away when we get married or when we become Christians. So we have to understand that, that we have the ability to fall in love with someone, but it's not always the best. It doesn't always mean we have to go and be with this person, especially under the circumstances of infidelity, because God tells us not not to have an affair because he knows how painful and how destructive it can be. Um, so keep that in mind also that that's the spiritual reality of what's behind the affair. God didn't orchestrate it. He did not send that person to you. Um, and if our enemy sent that person to us, which we can pretty much say he did, then his goal is to kill, steal, and destroy. So do you really think he's going to let you have a good relationship with your affair partner? That's just some things to think about. Okay, the next one is your insecure attachment style will cause the relationship to fail. So we have to think about this. If we're having an affair, we have an insecure attachment style because attachment styles are the way we interact with the people, interact and attach with the people who are important to us. And they come with a set of negative mindsets and negative coping behaviors. So that negativity, a negative way of seeing things is going to affect whatever relationship this person is in. So even if you got with your affair partner, you would still have your insecure attachment style to deal with and work through. You would still, like for me, I had abandonment wounds. So I was faced with abandonment wounds with my husband. They affected our relationship. My husband is a dismissive avoidant. And because he doesn't know how to deal with emotions and he's afraid of them, he would withdraw. So that would make me think he was going to leave me. So we had to face our, uh, our uh, insecure attachment styles in the marriage and it almost ended our marriage. So you really want to think about that. Hey, if I'm having an affair, this is a clue that I have some core wounds that are subconscious and my subconscious is controlling this behavior. And I, like I said, I always say this, guys, we are not aware of this because it's subconscious. A lot of times we just think, oh, well, that's just the way I think, or that's just the way I handle things. Or, you know, if my husband does something, I'm going to be critical about it. That, that's just how I handle it. Well, criticizing your partner is a coping mechanism. It just is. And criticism is one of the things that causes a marriage to break down. Another one is defensiveness. Well, I just get defensive because they're attacking me. Well, maybe they're not attacking you. Maybe they're just trying to tell you how they feel or something that hurt their feelings, but you're not hearing that because you are interpreting their heart and their pain as them attacking you. So you're going to become a defensive and attack back. And defensiveness is one thing that destroys a marriage also. So we have to think about these things. We cannot walk around with our head in the clouds and think, oh gosh, this is great. And I'm not saying it's not. I'm sure it is. I'm sure you bonded. I'm sure you're really close to this person. I bonded with my affair partner. We really loved each other. We became really good friends, but he's not good for me. 
He was not good for our, my future, my kids, or anything. We have to make a decision about our future based on what's best for us, not how we feel. We don't always have to follow our feelings. They, they lie. They're all over the place. You know, our heart cannot be trusted. Okay, number four. You are looking at your age, husband, sorry. I uh, made my note with age. Uh, you're looking at your husband from a place of bitterness, resentment, and unfulfilled needs. I had the most heartbreaking conversation with a woman a couple of weeks ago. I literally wanted to cry when I got off the phone with her because she shared with me that she had actually married her affair partner and was regretting it terribly because she still was in love with her husband but they had been divorced for a couple of years and she knew she could not go back to him because he had moved on. Everything that she overlooked in the affair, she was slapped in the face with after they got married. And she realized that they were completely different people and she should have never married him. And that's a heartbreaking story because that happens so often, so, so often. And it's such a sad place to be in. A lot of times we become vulnerable because we have built up anger, resentment, and bitterness towards our husband. And the reason we have this built up is because we don't know how to communicate our needs effectively. Our spouse may be hard to talk to. They, um, they might be a dismissive avoidant and they might become defensive or they might be critical. In any case, we have a lot of unresolved arguments and instead of facing it and vocalizing and pushing for a solution, we will internalize it. And when we internalize it, you can think about each argument as a brick that go, if your argument goes unresolved, think of it as a brick and you build a wall all around your heart, your heart and you cannot feel love and all you feel is the anger and the resentment towards your spouse but sometimes when the marriage ends and you marry your affair partner that wall comes down like when your eyes get open the wall comes down and then you realize oh my god what did I do um, so these are some things to think about like really sit and think about this stuff um, because it, it it makes a difference. It honestly does. It's reality. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and I'm here for you. I'm here to help you sort through all of this stuff. Everything that I help you with is something that I walk through. I personally did to help heal myself and heal the marriage and everything that God taught me. And I, I take you through it. So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.